Hey booktube, this is Kim from K Backers Books coming to you from a different angle and this is a book haul. Yeah! Hi it's Kim, I have a book haul and I have I think around 10 books. I have a little pile of nonfiction and a little pile of fiction. And I'm going to start with the nonfiction and let's get the heavy stuff out of the way first. So my first one is When the Last Lion Roars by Sarah Evans. And if you remember in 2015, the killing of Cecil the Lion by a big game hunter in Africa. Um, and there was an enormous outrage about this case and it... There was so much conversation about wildlife conservation and big game hunting in general. And, and seriously, I, I truly don't understand why we, we continue to allow big game hunters in reservations specifically set up for them to hunt. I, I don't understand the sport of it. I don't understand how uh, animals can be kept in a limited area in order for them to be hunted by humans. I don't get it. But Sarah Evans writes about um, the devastating plight of Africa's lions. She said a century ago there were more than 200,000 wild lions living in Africa and today the population is reduced from that amount by at least 90%. So I absolutely love lions. I love wild animals. I love when wild animals are allowed to stay wild. And so I found that and I picked that one up. I bought this next book because I saw this on Karen's channel at Run Right Reads. And this is called Love and Math, The, Hit, the Heart of Hidden Reality by Edward Frankel. Edward Frankel is a professor of mathematics at University of California, Berkeley. And he talks about math and the beauty of it. And the, the blurb on the, on the back says, what if you had to take an art class in which you were taught only how to paint a fence, but were never shown the paintings of Van Gogh or Picasso? That's what he talks about when it comes to math. We're taught by rote memorization and I, I guess the same word is rote, rote activity, how to do math but we're not taught about the intricacies and the beauty of it and the, the sense that it makes. And some of us are so quick and easy to say, oh, I'm not a math person, I hate math. I actually really love math and I was very good at it in school. So I found that from Karen's channel and I bought that one. Now the next one, this is where it gets a little heavier. Um, up until a very short time ago, maybe in the last few years, I didn't really know who Emmett Till was. I only heard his name in short snippets of conversation in on a TV show or in a history class or in school in some way, but I had no idea what the details of his life and his legacy were. So I was a little embarrassed to admit that, but you know what? That's where I'm gonna start with self-education. And I picked up The Blood of Emmett Till by um, Timothy B. Tyson. And I'm wondering if there's any other watchers or viewers out there who, like me, are really simply unaware of the history of Emmett Till. Uh, in 1955, he was 14, and he was accused of wolf whistling or making a pass at a white woman. He was then um, grabbed by a white mob, uh, mutilated, beaten, and lynched. Um, his mother, for his funeral, demanded an open casket so that people viewing him could see what the depravity of these white people led to. I have seen that photo. I have seen other photos. It's, it's very gruesome. Um, I don't even think there are pictures in the book. I'm flipping through really quickly. Um, there aren't any pictures in the book, but anything if you have a morbid interest it's all online i also recommend you watch the docu documentary 13th by ava duvernay i think that's how you pronounce her name she directed the um, documentary regarding the 13th amendment 
to the Constitution, which was the emancipation of slaves and the end of slavery. There's she she does add um, some of the a small portion of the history of Emmett Till and what happened to him. Um, so I highly recommend that documentary and I'm really eager to read that book. I also picked up, which needs no real big description, but Michelle Alexander's book, The New Jim Crow. This one is the 10th anniversary edition, so there's a new preface by the author. Um, the subtitle is Mass Incarceration in the Age of Colorblindness. Um, I also want to read more about the actual Jim Crow laws that were set up shortly after slavery actually formally ended. Um, but th this is an important book, something that I've been wanting to read for a while. And the other one, I was extremely happy because there's not a lot of bookstores near me. We, I have a few within about half an hour. Um, there's one bookstore very close to me, half an hour away, that only sells backlist bargain books. And it's one of my favorite stores and they just recently reopened with all of the social distancing and the, the caution and everything. Um, but I did buy a few books in there and I found this, this one. Now, these are all brand new books, but they are bargain books. So they're in immaculate condition. This one, this one is We Were Eight Years in Power by ta Coates. This is a collection of his essays. He is a journalist and he's talking a lot about the election um, of Barack Obama and his eight years of the presidency. I'm going to read a little bit of the, oh, and by the way, I'm going to read a little bit of the blur, but look at these end papers. Um, it's a beautiful book, but let me read a little bit here. Um, it says, we were eight years in power was the lament of reconstruction era black politicians as the American experiment, experiment in multiracial democracy ended with the return of white supremacist rule in the South. In this sweeping collection of new and selected essays, Coates explores the tragic echoes of that history in our own time. The unprecedented election of a black president followed by a vicious backlash that fueled the election of the man Coates argues is America's first white president. So um, really happy to find that one. Now I'm gonna get to fiction. Okay, this one is a collection of short stories. This is Rebecca Mackay's Music for Wartime. I actually found this in the same store that I found We Are Eight Years in Power, so I, I got this one. Collection of short stories, and it says, a, a description of a few of them, a reality show producer manipulates two contestants into falling in love, even as her own relationship falls apart. Just after the fall of the Berlin Wall, a young boy has a revelation about his father's past when a renowned Romanian violinist plays a concert in their home. When the prized elephant of a traveling circus keels over dead, the small town minister tasked with burying its remains comes to question his own faith. In an unnamed country, a composer records the folk songs of two women from a village on the brink of destruction. Um, I've got a couple of her other books. Uh, the Great Believers is one of them that I hope to read coming up soon. And The Borrowers, which, yeah, I think that's the title of it. So I found that and was eager to hand my money over. This one I was really excited to pick up. This is um, Carolina de Roberta's book, I, I'm not good at rolling the R's, so Spanish names are beyond me. I apologize. This is Cantora, Cantoras. I think I did it on that one. And this was published in 2019. Um, 2019, and this is the paperback copy that just came out. This is the story of uh, the... Uruguay's brutal military government in the 1970s, which made homosexuality illegal, um, a dangerous transgression. And this is the story of five women who want to, want to basically be able to live their lives and be who they are. They find a rundown house that they end up using as their own, kind of as a home base, as a safe place. And so they go back and forth. It's over the next 35 years, they make the home a secret sanctuary and they keep coming back and forth to the house, whether alone or with um, their partners at the time, or some of them come in a group and, and back and forth. So it's, a, it's basically a safe sanctuary for them. And um, glad that just came out in paperback. This one is a little 
out of character for me, but it got I got recommended this book by a friend who I trust, and this is Terry Hayes's I Am Pilgrim. And I'm gonna quickly read the back because the blurb is short. A breakneck race against time and an implacable enemy. An anonymous young woman murdered in a rundown hotel, all identifying characteristics dissolved by acid. A father publicly beheaded in the blistering heat of a Saudi Arabian public square. A notorious Syrian biotech expert found eyeless in a Damascus junkyard. Smoldering human remains on a remote mountainside in Afghanistan. A flawless plot to commit an appalling crime against humanity. One path links them all and only one man can make the journey, Pilgrim. This was this seems like a really super duper summer read because it's probably going to be, um, it's a thriller, you know, what was I trying to say? Not a spy thriller. Um, maybe just a thriller. That pretty much describes it. But this sounds like a great read for the summer. Fast paced, um, you know, turn your pages, don't want to blink kind of a book. So... The next one is one of the prettiest books I've ever bought, and I loved it when it was in hardcover. This is the paperback version of The Stationery Shop by Marjan Kamali. Look at how pretty this book is. Here's the, there's the light, so you can see all that gold foil. It is my one of my favorites. It's a deckled edge paperback with French flaps, and this is such a pretty book. It's basically a love story between Roya, and that she's li they're living in Iran. She's a dreamy, idealistic teenager in 1953 Tehran. She she loves this stationery shop, which includes books, stationery, pens, office supplies. This is like my this is like my dream store. And she finds solace and comfort and beauty in this shop. Um, the owner, Mr. Fakhri with a keen instinct for a budding romance, introduces her to her, his other favorite customer, Handsome Bauman. And of course, the two young people fall in love and they plan not very long after that to get married. But eventually they're supposed to meet in the square at the front of the stationery shop, I believe, and violence breaks out. And they never, she, he, she's waiting for him and he never arrives. And it, she moves on with her life. She has no idea what happened to him. She doesn't know how to find him. She moves on with her life, and it's not until 60 years later, after she's actually left Tehran, gone to the United States, married another man, that she has the chance encounter where she can get some closure. It sounds so good. And the last book is um, I went to my one of my local Goodwills, because unfortunately, not unfortunately, but we have two in the area, and those are the, the typical most of the time only place to buy used books. There's one used bookstore about 40 minutes from me that's very, very good, but they have a lot of really, really old books that I'm not into. And then any other used bookstores are, are about an hour away. So I found this at Goodwill for $5 and it is Angie Thomas's On the Come Up. I just read um, The Hate You Give at the beginning of this month and loved it. This one is her next novel. It is the story of 16-year-old Brie who wants to become a famous rapper. She is the daughter of an underground hip-hop legend who has died, and she basically wants to gain fame and, and become famous for her rap skills and for her musical talent, um, basically to survive. Her, her family, which is her mother, ha gets laid off, they have no money, They've, they can barely eat, they're gonna get evicted from their apartment. And she ends up creating a rap song that goes viral, but it says for all the wrong reasons. She's not looked on very favorably, very positively. She's looked at as a thug and a hooligan, the, it, the blurb says on the inside. Um, but eventually the book talks about how, how she succeeds, how she moves on in life. So I was really um, so thrilled to find this at Goodwill in almost impeccable brand new hardcover condition for $5. That's my book haul. And I have to be honest with you, I've, I bought some other books, but I, I, <laughs> I kind of limited the number that I was going to present in my video because I didn't want to look too much like a materialistic ass. But 
I did buy some other books, not too many others. But these are the ones I'm really excited about, and I'm not going to bombard anybody with piles and piles of books. I do have to slow down on my book purchases. I do buy, I am extremely thrifty, aka cheap, and I do, I am very aware of my budget. And I do unhaul a lot of books, especially if I DNF them, I get rid of them. Or if I've gone through my shelves, and I know I'm not going to be interested in this one, this one, this one anymore. I will donate them or give them away. I have a friend who has taken bags of my books and resold them, and I don't claim any money from that. I, it's, it's more valuable to me to get rid of clutter in my house. So that's my latest book haul. Very excited about that. And uh, I'm gonna try not to have many more. I might have a couple here and there, but I'd like to really slow down on my buying. So if I have any future book hauls, maybe they'll only have two or three or five books in them. I'm going to try, you guys. I really am. So if you have any comments on any of the books I just showed you, write them down below. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do if you're moved to do that. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. In the next video, if I can talk correctly. Talk to you soon. Bye.